session. Uh, most, of, most likely everybody knows me, uh, but no, no, not many of you know what I am doing in, in terms of research. I will explain in, in not more than 45 minutes probably. Uh, my presentations are not very long usually, but they're very concise. Um, the, I will give you an update of what is happening in the Internet of Things area. I will give you some hints for the students how you can test, how you can land your experiments in the area of, of Open IoT. For uh, researchers or senior researchers, you can see the Open IoT as an opportunity for uh, expand your area of expertise because it's, it's a green field at the moment. Uh, for senior researchers or PIs, it's an opportunity to get new proposals, get it in, and obviously attract uh, attract investment to to an insight. Um, the, the, the dynamic is very simple. From the left to right, you will see different presentations, and I will go one by one. Uh, you will see the, base, the, the, the update of Internet of Things on, the, on my left. In the center, I will go into application. One typical ex one example will be the Open IoT project. I will just go into the, a little bit of details, but no, not much, because it's related with cloud computing. And in the third one, we will sh I will show you the, the implementations that we have in there, in Insight. So some imp small implementation that is the proof of concept for the Internet of Things. So there is some, some work done on that area. So the, the, the first part um, of my presentation is research, and then the applied innovation, I call it, and then deployments. Okay? So let's first let's start with the concept of Internet of Things, because everybody is anxious to see what is the Internet of Things happening here. Sorry, that's what started, because the remote. I will not use the remote. Okay, so... Uh, the main concept of Internet of Things is that there are many devices in the market, and all of them uh, are sensors, called sensors. So I devices everywhere. So you can see from motor cars uh, in the mountains, um, even people are wearing devices, or even appliances like Samsung develop all the appliances to put in the in smart house. But also this kind of uh, uh, enthusiastic uh, devices like Arduino cards or raspberries, Zigbee's that you can even build on. You can go to a toy shop and even you can even get a sensor in, in, in a toy shop. The idea is to expand this idea and combine it with the evolution of the culture. Nowadays, the society is also changing. Before, was afraid of the technology, and now the people is more willing to share information, to share the, the, the technology. So this is a, a cultural change in, in the Internet of Things. And obviously, these everyday devices are uh, ev evolving to the virtual world. So you can have applications on the top, like semantic web applications or uh, internet applications, and you combine or you interact with devices. So this interaction breach uh, a gap or uh, uh, some sort of uh, um, uh, commonalities that wa were missing before. And the Internet of Things is targeting precisely those systems that uh, target that one. So in general, there are plenty of sensors in the, w in, in the streets, plenty of sensors developed, and plenty of applications on, on top of that. So this is what we call interaction between sensors and, uh, uh, and, and, and the Internet. But when we start to create networks, when we start to create uh, links, between those sensors, be between different technologies, we, is what we call sensor networks. Sensor networks, we can find typical examples in the fields, like a crow, uh, crow uh, soil, in the cars, which is a typical example and very anti uh, antique. In, in the marine applications, you can see sensors. Manufacturing, one of the main areas, one of the main uh, aspects that we can find sensor networks. And obviously, this production on, and logistics. From the time that you send a packet, the sensor networks start to work. There are some uh, RFID sensors and NFC tags that is tracking all the time your product and your packet. And every time you receive, the, in, the, in the post offices, they receive the parcel, they scan it, and it's a sensor. So all this kind of a sensor network built. Imagine if you send from Ireland to other part in Australia, so different systems have to co be coordinated. So this is what we call a sensor network. However, we need to make these sensor networks intelligent. We need to react, or we need to do it uh, in a more uh, fancy way to solve uh, more problems that comes with the complexity of those sensor networks. And here is when the Internet of Things come, uh, come alive. Uh, and here is where the, where the, the inside activity is taking uh, uh, lead in, lead leadership in, in this area. So because we have the expertise from the semantic web to attract this uh, information from different sources and combine them and make them more rich and then create systems that can react to, the, to this variation on this uh, richness of, of data. So when we collect this information from different sensors and different technologies, we can combine uh, uh, this, uh, we can generate this smartness in, in, the, in the Internet of Things. So this is what is attractive to the, to the people in, in the real world when I go and explain the, the, the relationship between sensors and, and semantic web. 
Obviously, there are many initiatives, there are many definitions of Internet of Things. I will attach to the simplest one. And this is coming from the uh, 1999 in, in MIT. There is no complications. It's just the interaction between uh, devices and give some smartness on top of that. So the, whatever is the, the net sensor network is, is part of the, the Internet of Things. Okay? There are a lot of literature. You can just go and browse the, the books, and all of them will coincide in one aspect. It's the interaction between humans and machines. No, no, nowadays, there is no more bridges in between the technology and the, and the humans. Um, I like this graph because um, uh, Gardner's, Gardner's is a very well-known company to do analysis in the market. They take all the emerging technologies and do analysis, and they project how the technology will establish in a few years. So from their curve that they propose, there is a peak of influence, inflated expectations. Usually when you bring with new concepts, you say, yeah, this is the best, this is the solution. And it goes in with the years to the, the, the disillusionment. There is no good goals, there is no challenges to, to solve. And then the slope come up and then get the plateau of productivity. And here is when the companies take uh, the advantage of that one. Here is the, the product come up. And if you see the Internet of Things, well, you can see many, many technologies in this one. This is, this is coming from the April 2013, presently new. Internet of Things is still in the creating expectations, right? So you can see, Martin, then what you're talking about, because in research, we have to go ahead, even of the product uh, resolution. But more interesting is, this triangle means uh, more than two years, more than 10 years will take to the technology to establish or to get into the plateau of productivity. However, in those two years, three years, uh, Cisco was saying, yeah, in, in the, re the real world, we have devices interconnected. For 2010, we will have 1.8 million of devices connected, so more than the population in the world. Billion, sorry, billion. And more than the population in the world. So we reach all, all that level of connectivity. But those the services are in place, those the Internet of Things is in place, according to Gartner, in 10 years. According to IBM, on April 2013, they released the first car with the Internet of Things implemented. So who is saying the truth? Who is not uh, working on that? The reality is Internet of Things is here. And we have to take uh, advantage of this one from a research perspective, from an impl implementation perspective, and from an application perspective. OK? So this is the first part. I will move into the second part. And you will see some sort of uh, applications. OK? So in Derry, uh, we have some uh, projects that are working in the area of Internet of Things. Most likely, you have seen about Gambas. You have listened about Gambas. Or uh, City Pulse, which is one of the new uh, initiatives. Uh, Vital, who is another initiative. And Open IoT. Okay? So these four projects are the flagships in, 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 the, in the area of Internet of Things. Okay? Uh, as you can imagine, in research, there are many initiatives, there are many institutes working in the area in the Internet of Things. But the European Commission established the Internet, Internet uh, of Things Research Cluster. The idea of this IERC cluster is to coordinate those activities to avoid overlaps. So they don't found uh, projects that are too similar. So they try to coordinate activities in there. Uh, I am the, the, the coordinator of the semantic interoperability and, and service openness in the IERC at the European level. But what we have uh, uh, achieved or what we have agreed is that all the projects running at the moment needs to have this impact at the industrial level. So we try to also uh, bring the industrial to the, to the meetings and to the, to the events that we coordinate. So I will um, describe very briefly every project. You, I mean, the people listening here, you can uh, go and ask them if you're interested, speci especially for students that you want to put your experiments in, in place. Gambas goes into the mobile applications, security and privacy, how the, the, the devices can interconnect in a, in a secure way, in a privacy, with a privacy level. CityPulse is more working in the virtual level, doing some reasoning on top. Uh, sorry, in the previous one, uh, uh, Josie uh, might be the, the, the perfect person to describe more in details. In CityPulse, Alessandra can address you to the reasoning part in the virtual, in virtual uh, applications. In Vital, what we do is um, when we have different solutions in the, in the virtual world uh, with, with some sensors attached, so we do, we do, on top of that one, we create uh, the management systems that can articulate solutions once that they are implemented. Because the problem is not only create a vertical solution. We have to interact with it, between, between those verticals. 
And my favorite uh, example is OpenIoT because OpenIoT, OpenIoT is the niche or is the starting point of these uh, initiatives. Uh, when I start to, to work as a coordinator in OpenIoT, uh, we, 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 we saw the potential to exp expand the idea into a different, um, into a multiple worlds. And then we wrote the proposal to, in collaboration with the, uh, the other partners about uh, Vital. So Vital can be the consequence of OpenIoT. And OpenIoT is now is in the second year. Um, Vital just started a few months back. So as you can see the, 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 the links in between or the consequences of that. Very briefly, uh, OpenIoT combined technologies like uh, uh, cloud computing, which is my main expertise in, in, in dairy, in, in insight. Um, IoT uh, in terms of sensor, sensor uh, applications, uh, and obviously the data, data privacy and security uh, in, in terms of uh, exchange of information. The idea in OpenIoT is if you have verticals, let's say you have an industrial in, in, industry company working in, uh, in production of cars or security in, in the cars, and another company doing the, the shipping of the materials. So these companies, even if they produce the same item or the same product, they are not compatible at all. They have different reference numbers, different IDs, different systems, and the idea is to put on top OpenIoT, and OpenIoT will enable to share the data that they need to share. It's important because people think, hey, if I am going to the OpenIoT space, eh, I might be sharing my information and it's privacy related. No, no, no. You put the data that you want, share with the other technologies, with the other companies, because it's related in favor of your product. Or even better, you just put your data on top, and then another third entity can make a service on top of that. I don't know if you are aware of the uh, Parcel2Go company. So Parcel2Go, what they do is just precisely this example in the logistics. They collect the data from the uh, DHL and all the FedEx, and they offer you even better prices on top because they have deal with the, with the, with the vertical itself. So similar to this one, we do with the devices, with the data from the devices. Yeah, they're coming from the, <coughs> from the sensors. Obviously, it's more complex because in OpenIoT, we have to deal with the data models and information management. Uh, in, in, a, in, a, in one sentence, because this, this, that's the elevator pitch that uh, people ask me every time, what OpenIoT does uh, and what OpenIoT do in, 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 in terms of uh, uh, services is provide the facilities and the utility management uh, functionalities of the cloud for the sensors because the, the, the cloud plays an important role in here. So we collect the data, we put it access, uh, the access in the cloud, and then we just uh, provide this, this information. So there are obviously some challenges. There are some applications at a different level. At the real and uh, application, uh, physical level, we have to deal with the heterogeneity of sensor networks. At the virtualized world, we have to make this self-operability between different uh, uh, verticals. The utility access, we have to provide the tools to end users to create new applications, and I will show you uh, in the next part is what kind of applications I'm talking about. And obviously, the application, at the application side, we have to uh, allow applications on the move to, that we can migrate from one platform to another platform transparently with no uh, hesitation. Okay, this is pretty much the, uh, the, the design principle for the open IoT. It's very typical approach and you will get more into this one because you know about REST applications, which is the interface for semantic web for the internet, LOD, which is open link data and that everybody knows in, in, in insight. And obviously the virtual sensor, which might be not the, the, the easy to digest concept, but is related with sensors itself. The co-op is the protocol that we use to translate uh, raw data from the devices into the uh, LOD or into the databases for, um, for the open IoT. And this, those databases that, in, that rely in REST are not more than triple stores. So then now you can see, ah, okay. So inside is playing a big role in this one because we are using this, this uh, type of um, databases. In the application side, there are some uh, good examples that I will go into details later on, uh, the level of industrial. And so what we have done with this uh, uh, design principle is just expand according to the technology that we have experienced and according with the technology that our partners in OpenIoT has experience. And we, you, as you can see here, OpenIoT relies in the middle of the application and the middlewares. So we have this REST uh, application implemented. SQL is one of the experiments that at the moment we are running to improve the access to the databases. We are enabling streams, uh, linked streams, rather than just uh, data stores, 
triple data stores, so we are making it more dynamic because in a sensor you can imagine if you want to measure the weather stations, you need to update very uh, often. But how often that has to be to make efficient and don't blow up the, the, the channels of the, the broadband. So this is part of the uh, linked stream uh, analysis that we are running in, in Insight. And linked data obviously is because there is an open space uh, uh, data set, so we can get that information from there. We use some standards like W3C SSN, which is the ontology for se uh, sensor networks. And at the, at the moment, it's, it's getting uh, very well um, very well accepted, uh, this, this, this approach. We are not coming from the scratch, obviously, because uh, these type of projects are not uh, are mature enough to come up from basis. The basis is coming from the IOTA, IOTA Internet of Things architecture. They define it a reference model, and then we set it on top of that one, the, the Internet of Things uh, in, op in Open IoT approach. As I said, there are some standards because uh, we, need, we need to come up with and complain with those, those standards. OGC, the geospatial uh, uh, organization, they define the standards for location-based systems. Uh, for sensor and sensor app and uh, APIs, we are coming from the W3C community. And obviously for devices and no sensors, it doesn't even make sense to make uh, specific because there is no specifications. The IEEE is making efforts to define here specifications, but uh, it's still in process. That's why I'm saying the uh, IoT is a green field to, to, to everyone, and there are big opportunities for, for all. This is the big picture of the architecture. You can see here the, the, the open IoT concrete architecture relies on the cloud computing concepts. IoT A, which is the architecture uh, for management uh, internal things. The requirements from our specific use case, use cases in open IoT. And obviously there are some background platforms on top. This can give you the big picture of how to design an architecture. So then you, you might understand how uh, the people start to sell just uh, PowerPoints with uh, diagrams. But as far as you understand this concept, you can translate into comp components and devices later on. And I will show you how. So this is the IoT A architecture, just generic concepts, management, security, application devices, communication channels, IoT services, virtual entities, and business process management. If I overlap the previous architecture with this one, I will come up with something more complex that will start to define the, com the components of my architecture in Open IoT. Um, quality of service manager, device manager, and all these components are part of the Open IoT architecture implementation. I will go with my uh, software programmers and, and tell them I need a, a module that will do these functionalities. And obviously, we will define the full architecture. At the moment, in the year two, I'm very glad to say that we have achieved most of the components, except quality of service manager and these two more there. But the objective or the, the, the advantage of open IoT beyond all the solution is that those are standalone components. You can remove them, put it in your application, and they will, they will work. So that's one of the advances that we are offering. And it comes from the idea of open source project. Because not all the projects are open source. They just develop the solution, they put it in the annals, and they put it into the application. For us, we create a GitHub. So it's open source. You can go download it, test it, and even improve it, and give us feedback, and then start to create more applications on top. I know this is quite a, um, in one go, it's difficult to understand, but the message here is Internet of Things is, as, is a bunch of technologies that can be enhanced via uh, APIs and via interfaces. It's not, a, it's not, not something from, from the, the other world. So this is a big picture of the, uh, for a high level description. All the, the blocks and diagrams that I showed, showed you before are here. The request definition, the presentation. I will not go in detail to explain what is the process, but the main idea is there are sensors here, there is data coming from here that will be storage in the cloud using the RDF triple stores distributed in the, in the, in the cloud. There will be some schedulers that will listen the requirements from the user. I need, a, I need to create a service to maybe monitoring the, 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 train, the train circulation in Germany. Then the, this scheduler, scheduler will go and ask to the database if the information is available. If not, the database will have a service delivery and utility manager that will coordinate the acquisition of those, sens those sensor data. Then we'll activate or deactivate the sensor if it's possible, and then get the data and make a presentation of that data. And at the same time, you can uh, imagine, OK, do you have access to the sensors? You can control the sensor? In theory, in the internal things, yes. At the moment, in the, in the, in the project, we are still uh, developing the components that will allow us to control the sensors. But we already have the components 
that allow us to activate the sensor to get the data, to push the data into the cloud. So this is pretty much the, the big uh, analysis of the architecture. Here are the steps that I just described from 1 to 12. Uh, it may be easier to understand that in this way. And this is how the functional architecture looks like in, 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 in functional blocks. OK, this is coming from 2012. I, I might need to update it because <laughs> everything changed with the time. OK? So the main idea is that the guys uh, uh, in, the, in the consortium and people from here in Insight, uh, we have developed some APIs that allow us to show the results of this one. So this one, for instance, is how we can allocate sensors in a map. And we can see how this is the historical records of the, of the sensor. And we can see the performance of the sensor in the time, con energy consumption and activation as well. And this is a bigger map with more, more sensors in the map. And here is the traceability of the record. And this is what is very attractive to the people when we show the internal things. Because those sensors are coming from different uh, applications, different domains, even different technology. Uh, there is a, a kind of a configuration and monitoring tool as well. So we can uh, base it on the, on the discovery of sensors around the world or around the application. We can select those sensors and uh, do a, a monitoring uh, or, or monitorization of these uh, sensors, but also the activation of those sensors. So you can start to imagine, OK, if I have control of the data coming from specific sensors, I can start to create complex services. Like uh, if, uh, if the people is going to Derry and it's raining, what we, and I have traffic conditions, I can even estimate what time people will start to work today. So this kind of a uh, service is on top of that. OK, so the idea in here is to use the standards. We use the SSN. I will not go in details, because obviously most of you will be interested to, to go in and discover the ontologies. Uh, but the idea in here is just to relate sensors and sensing. So what sensing is the data, and sensor is the device. And then this relationship will be uh, fitted by an observation. So this observation is the concept that we are selling in OpenIoT. We can get observations, either from a physical device or from a virtual device. And then we call virtual sensor or physical sensor. And all these uh, relationships and concepts are, uh, are well specified in the standard from the W3C community that uh, Insight was part or before Dairy was part of, of this initiative. Okay, Functional blocks uh, is easier to understand so many times because this is complex to explain. right? So just imagine that all these components are implemented. We need to create the ontology and use the ontology to, to specify the open IoT uh, um, data coming now. The advantage or the difference between SSN and open IoT uh, data models is that we use clouds. Okay, we have to, we, 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 we design and we de de um, define it, the concept from the cloud and put it into the open IoT. So now we have this interaction between domains as well. Okay. So I will just go, who is using SSN? Um, a part of the project that we are coordinating, or the, the project that I push to coordinate and use that uh, technologies is OpenIoT, Spitfire, uh, some other projects like IoTest, uh, Sensor Grid, CSSR in, in, in UK, and all these companies uh, are using officially the SSN uh, in all their the implementations. Okay. If you want to know more about OpenIoT, obviously the, the website and the publications are in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the portal. And I will not go more in details about that one, because the idea is just to give you the taste of how the Internet of Things and how the application side is, 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 is happening in, in Europe. OK, the last part, which is the IoT deployment and implementation examples, I will just show you some scenarios that we have in the OpenIoT. Uh, Eric, can you just go to the next one? There are three main uh, scenarios, manufacturing, smart cities, and agri-food and phenonet. So as you can imagine, it's industry, smart industries, and smart cities. These are, all the, are the keywords. Everywhere you go and talk about open IoT, sorry, about IoT, Internet of Things, you will listen, oh, smart cities scenarios. Yeah, that's, 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 the, that's the, the, the keyword, the, the boozy word. I will show you how uh, manufacturing uh, can, uh, we, we have developed or uh, our uh, solution for uh, manufacturing, and you will see how easy it is to create services on top of that. Uh, next one, please. Uh, this is the real application. This is uh, how it works in, in, in Athens. There's a SenseUp, is one small company, uh, an SME, that produces uh, packaging, packages for medicines or packaging for any product. The, this is particularly for uh, medicines. They have to identify between colors because they have different uh, color code. They have to count 
the, uh, this is the color identification sensor. Uh, they have to count the number of uh, reps in the production line for the machines, to monitor the, 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 the machines. And they have to count the, the, the packages that come to the boxes, the carton boxes that pass in, in the production line. And they also have to tag the put an identification. So these are real sensors, and they can uh, uh, obviously uh, have raw data from them. The idea to use OpenID is to make it more efficient because if, you, if they do this manually or based on the performance of the machines, they most of the time has overplus or overproduction or maybe sometimes shortage in the, in the, in the materials. So we, we held them, we, we them to, sol to solve this problem. And the solution was to create dynamic services that can be applied to different uh, demands. So you, you can imagine that pro producing a small package for a medicine is not the same uh, problem that uh, is not the same uh, effort that it requires to produce maybe a big uh, parcel box. So every time they have to change the production, they adapt to the production line, they have to change the sensors. They have to even plan a new, a new layout in the production line. With this approach, uh, using OpenIoT, they don't need to change anything because the sensors are in place and sometimes the sensors are remotely. They, are, they don't, they, they don't uh, have the sensors in, in, in the plant. They just go to the, the warehouse and check which sensor is activated and then they just bring the sensor in here. The idea in here, and I will show you in this screen, It's a realistic uh, video. Oh, sorry. For some reason, I just close it. Second. Um. Okay. It's here. So this is the production line in in, in Athens in Sen the company called Sensap. Uh, this is how they traditionally do the, the 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 identification of the products. They have this type of uh, tablets. This is the, the, the previous model. This is the current model using OpenIoT. I will uh, the more, more advanced come up. And the sensors are coming from the pictures that I showed you before. Obviously, the requirements are uh, identified. Uh, I will just jump into the sensor. Here, here is the counting. Here is the color code in the identification. And obviously, there are here the quantity production line. Yeah, here is how you, they count the pieces. And the idea in here is just to produce the online services. See, here is a tablet. They put in a tablet because they found it more fancy to carry on for supervisors and bring the, the tablets. But there is also a, a fixed station. The, the, the here is a fixed station where the, the, the people just use it in, in, in the production line. Here is how you create a service. You can create a matrix of different sensors, bunch of virtual sensors, bring it in here. Or uh, you can define the number of sensors, the matrix, two by two or three by six, whatever sensors you want to get from the production line. And here in the example is the color identification and also the performance of the production line and also the performance of the, the counting devices. Yeah, you can customize them. You define the type of sensor, which is already in the database. And also you define the type of uh, lecture that you want to perform and all this uh, customization that you can do to sensors. Okay. Once that you create the sensor on the fly, you just carry on into the path, and then you just, at the end you will have a bunch of sensors that you want to monitor in. And this case is a monitoring performance, monitoring of production line, and monitoring of uh, mass, uh, the warehouse uh, production. So different areas, different uh, applications bring it into, this, into the same platform. So they, here are the monitors of them. And then once that you create it on the fly, you just run it, and it should work like this. Okay, you create it, you put it, and in the background obviously it's working, and you will see this performance on the back. This is the interface with the real sensors. GSN is one of the platforms that we use to interact with the real sensors, and we get the data from there. Mm -hmm. This is how the, semantically the sensors are described. GSN can annotate the sensors, and we can even go and see. This is more for developers, but in general, or the concept is 
based on, on the fly, you can define new services. And then you can even locate the sensors in the map to see. And this application is quite fancy because the, the owner of the company want, is uh, always traveling and he wants to see what sensors are working and what sensors are not working. Because he's, uh, he's, a, he's an SME and he doesn't have too much people to hire. So he just make a call and say, OK, I need, a, I need that technician to replace that sensor because it's not working, or to check what's happening with that sensor. Because he has two or three companies like that. OK, so coming back to the application, uh, maybe the next slide. OK, see, so this is the, the screenshots that I took from the video. Uh, next one. Uh, the other scenario is smart cities. Smart cities is one of the applications, more extended applications. I mean, good in time. Um, uh, next one, please. And here, uh, you can see here is uh, the realization of uh, smart, smart monitoring, crowd sensing monitoring. I don't know if all of you were here last year, uh, actually no, two years ago when we produced the Volvo Ocean Race app. The idea in the Volvo Ocean Race app was to have in the mobile phone the variation, the, the mobility of the people in the, in, the, in, the, in the event. So we have a visitors around 2,000 people, and the idea is what, to see how the, the, the mass of the crowds moves between the, the places in the city. And without any privacy issues, because we just said that we will just take the GS, uh, GPS coordinates, we will not personalize the, the coordinates. And the idea is to, to, to see that uh, variation on, on, the, on here. So this is how we can see the triple store coming from the different interfaces in that application in, in Volvo Ocean Race. And this, uh, we run an experiment. Before putting it into the app, uh, in, in USM Group, we run an experiment. And we collect data from uh, open data from Dublin, from three main cities in, in, in Ireland. And you see here are three months, most likely, from 20, no, three days, sorry, uh, from uh, the December 28th, no, sorry, uh, 2012, the, from the 28th of uh, July until the 30th of July. So we collect this data in Dublin, also we collected in Cork, and we collected in Galway. And Coincidentally, there are the three bigger cities in, in, in Ireland, and if we overlap, we can see that in some cities, the activity re is reduced compared with other uh, cities. And that's, that's because obviously there are more, uh, the conclusions of this one was because in, in Galway, in Galway there are more events, more festivals. So people keep more active during the day, even, even in the timeline, it's more extended. Uh, in Cork and Dublin, and Dublin is, is, is uh, the activity relies more into the uh, lunch times because the activity reduced in lunch time because people go, used to have to go for having lunch in the Stephens Green and all together go to that place. So the, all these statistics are not easy to digest if you don't have these uh, graphs. And also what we are trying to do in, or we will do it for the next year in OpenIT is to do a little bit of reasoning to precisely to come up with some sort of uh, uh, conclusion like that. So it's very, uh, very. Um, I'm very enthusiastic with this project because it's an open source, and everybody will will be uh, accessible, will be um, able to 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 contribute on, on that. So this is an example how we can create clusters in the in the in the world Ocean race. How we create clusters to see the group of people. It's not easy to see in a small map. There are 50 people in 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 one point. So we need to create clusters and and make this one. This is some uh, algorithms like this one. Uh, uh, obviously, in that, uh, in these uh, particular scenarios, this is just more like generic. There are some uh, 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 challenges that we need to achieve. Sensor networks. We need to satisfy sensor networks. We need to uh, provide the tools to uh, get the information from the sensors. We need to provide the uh, middleware to enable that data and put it into the top. And in terms of open source, it has to be uh, uh, physically or at least distributed in in an easy way that can be standalone installed. And in cloud computing, we need to create this model of uh, services, services as a uh, platform as a service. So you, can, you have to install and you have to also to provide the interfaces to uh, billing, accountability, uh, performance, and all that's included in the, in the open IoT. And obviously, the development of these applications requires information exchange, interoperability of the information. And in terms of management, we, we have to visualize these sensors. We have to perform activities on those sensors. And we have to uh, activate or deactivate those sensors. And here is where the next part and the last one is coming in, into, in, into place. So as I said, we have these three main areas, just to summarize. And one of, this, uh, one of the problems that haven't been achieved, uh, sorry, 
Uh, here is uh, the, the, mo the, 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 more, the more challenging part in, in open IoT. Information interoperability, open services, heterogeneous systems, and future internet networks and cloud. So as I said, pretty much the project is going in a good direction and achieving all, the, all of them. Okay. So there are some technologies in the background uh, working on that. There are some, uh, obviously, publications. We have to achieve this uh, objective, some more publications uh, that are accessible. And the idea is to show you in this last part, uh, next one, is how we can uh, articulate in dairy, in insight, because it sounds like a, it's a good project, it's a, a good collaboration project, but what we are doing in the, in the project itself, what insight is, uh, what is the role of insight in this in, in, uh, Internet of Things adventure. So we are supporting the SuperStream Collider idea. The, in here, what we do is just collide uh, data sets, stream data sets, mashups, and obviously we offer that uh, is all the data, the data sets are in the cloud, either for storage or but mainly for uh, processing. So we can uh, run parallel uh, processing or multiple queries at the same time, uh, supporting via a uh, super string collider. So this is one of the tools that uh, we are promoting, you know, we are putting efforts in, in this one. And obviously there are some functionalities like query builder, data source transformation, mashup engine, uh, mashup visual editor that our students or the team in USM is, is, is building, uh, building, uh, building up. And obviously there are some services on, on, on top that we don't go in this uh, domain, but at least we provide the interfaces or the APIs to, to demonstrate that uh, it's, accessible, it's, it's possible. Okay. Um, here's how we do the mashup discovery, or we just create, collide different sources and put it through the, the SuperString Collider, and we just get an answer via simple queries, uh, via Sparkle. Okay. Uh, this is a big picture of how you can combine data sources with applications via SuperString Collider following this process, acquisition, transformation, representation, queries, processing, and visualization. This is a simple service, service life cycle of the data that we uh, promote in Insight, or at least in the USM group in sensor data. Okay, so the idea in here is that you can see the transformation between uh, real sensor data, streaming data, and the virtual, virtual data. So this is how the, the, the meta, meta models can be mapped between different domains. And everybody knows about how to do this one in somehow in inside. Okay. Last but not least, uh, the how we can create a query for those experts in Sparkle. This is uh, not very functional, but for people that is not expert in Sparkle, you don't need to learn the language. You just carry on functionalities from the left, carry on to the right. What you have to do is just follow a logic that is defined in the in the tool, and you create your own your own query. This is uh, how to create a code. Uh, 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 sorry, a, a query with a specific code. And then once that you create the query, you just, uh, next one, you just visualize, oh, sorry, no. Uh, you just visualize the, the query. Oh, maybe it's missing. Here must be the editor of the queries, okay? But uh, it's missing. Okay, this is how you do it graphically. Instead of doing the programming line, you just concatenate or link stre different streams, traffic sensor, RDF, SQLs and you just visualize the results of the query. Here is the query and here is the result. So basically using this graph uh, concatenation. Okay. Uh, this is another visualization. You want to use uh, gadgets, uh, widgets from the from Google. You just can visualize the the performance of the sensors. Okay. Another visualization of weather stations, triplets. Mm -hmm. Another visualization of LSM discovery, how you can discover sensors. And this is how you can combine. This is the algorithm that, uh, uh, that I define it to make the concatenation in stream, super stream collider. So it's not very complex, but it's efficient at the moment. So we will see if, we need to mo if I need to modify it. Next one. Uh, there is an editor area, as I explained. The, as easy as you just carry on from one side to another side. And um, you don't need to learn much uh, about the tool, just carry on. Next one. And next one. And for instance, this is an example of how to trigger information from Twitter. You just create, a, we, we create a, a, um, a sensor, virtual sensor that connects with Twitter. And we just look for the beer festival uh, keyword and we just bring all the content from, from the streams. So keep in mind that this is a stream, it's not a, a data sensor, it's a stream. Acti uh, actively being modified. Okay, next one. I'm nearly at the end. Next one, probably. I need to jump this one. Okay, 
This is the, the, the service life cycle representation of the data. As I said, we have to uh, bring the data from physical devices, transform it into a, a data that is annotated, and then do a, some adaptation between different applications, interoperability mainly. And then on the top, we need to activate uh, applications and services. And the missing part or the uh, ongoing part and uh, research part is how to do this reverse process. From the top of the application, then go into the transformation, get the data according to the, to the sensor, and then go to the sensor and control the sensor, which is the most uh, challenging part. For that one, we have uh, uh, Samuel Michelek uh, here present, and he's working in this, this, this uh, using co-op protocols. Next one. This is architecture for that particular implementation in co-op. The idea is having the protocol, if we know the, the, the result of the application and we know the, the source of the data, we just use reverse engineering to go into the sensor because we can assume which, what type of sensor is it. So we have the L4DS sensor, we can define the sensor in here, and we transform from this uh, description into the Sparkle uh, uh, or uh, objects using HTTP uh, protocol. Next one. Here is an example. Um, I might be go just fast. And uh, what we have done, uh, what um, uh, Samuel have done is he interconnect uh, uh, sensor devices, the sensor in here, light sensor, with a lamp, traditional example of uh, activating the activated lamps. This is not science behind. But the, the, the semantic come up in, in terms of activation and deactivation when we use um, uh, the tool to, to visualize and to activate and deactivate. And we use Minecraft. Uh -huh. to, uh, to visualize and deactivate this one. You can see here the light is off, and semantically described in, in Minecraft, you can see this, the light is off. And then when you activated the light, or when the sensor is, uh, is uh, it's, it's triggered by the, by the light, when the sensor triggered the lamp, then in Minecraft you can see this one. And you can control the light via uh, Minecraft with some uh, uh, functionalities in here to activate and deactivate using co-op in, in the background. And obviously, everything is described via uh, uh, triplets. OK, so next one. Uh, this is the, the graphical uh, representation of this, the architecture. So how we can have uh, sensors and actuators, and you need to go up to the clients and following the, the, the service life cycle of the data that I described. It. Next one. And this is the, how the application looks like in, in, a, in, a, in a more uh, described. So Minecraft is in the background. Okay, next one. As you can see, uh, just to conclude, uh, Open IoT is a bunch of opportunities. There are many areas, from IT networks to security, transportation, industrial applications, and healthcare, consumer home, energy. Open IoT is just a small bunch of this one in here. So you can imagine how many other opportunities you will have for your experiments, for new opportunities, for new and budget support for new uh, research projects. So, next one. The, the message here is um, whatever is your uh, data set or whatever is your um, experiment that you're running can be part of a sensor. So you can en enable your data to be part of a sensor and then that information can be used for triggering different applications. Um, I have more uh, Examples about other technologies that we have in USM, but I, as I said, I don't want to use more than 45 minutes. Uh, but um, the RFID and NC NFCs, uh, next one, was used here maybe two years ago or three years ago. You might remember this application. Uh, you have your uh, RFID uh, tags, and just when you get proxy, uh, proxy to the, the antenna or to the reader, you are identified. Next one, you are identified by the system. And then your um, your profile is created, and then in the display your profile is uh, shown in, in, in the format of a business card. So it, it, what it really means is every person come to the display can be identified, and the, the added value or the services on top of that uh, application is that all the people that are in the room and has been identified and it somehow has a link with you because maybe it's working in the same project, maybe it's working in the same topics of research, or for some reason there are links, can be shown in the background. Uh, okay, there are, if you approach, okay, I am the only one to working in cloud computing? No, there are more people working in cloud computing. Ah, maybe I can even browse them. And then in that, time, that um, uh, demonstration, uh, 
it was just the kinetic uh, movements, and then you just draw the, the business cards from one side to another side. So you see, and the, the, the deployment of the technology was the minimum, just RFID cards and one reader, and the rest was just uh, sniff the information from the sensors that we have available. Next one. Uh, well, this one is the, the map in the, in the office, how it was deployed. Next one. Uh, the, the whole version race already explained, maybe just bypass quickly. Next one. So here is more some screens. LSM, uh, next one. LSM is how to visualize the sensors around the world. Uh, next one. Uh, next one. <laughs> Sorry, next one, just because of time. Okay, here you can have the map uh, uh, and you can have the sensors around the map. Those are sensors that are activated. If you go online, uh, uh, LSM, it's not here, lsm.dairy. Uh, sorry, lsmderry.ie, then you can see this, uh, this platform working. You just click or make, make a zoom in the area that you want to, 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 to see, and you will see the sensors coming up, popping up. You just click on the sensor and you will get the data from the sensor. It's open data, you just get the data. Next one. This is an example, for instance, in London, you click on the traffic cam and you just get the triple data or the raw data. If you click in the raw data, you will get the data like this one. If you go into the triple, you can get the triples and uh, subject object predicate, but also you can get the real image of the, of the, of the sensor. So it's very simple. Next one. Uh, another example, how you can get the triples. This is for flights. And this is for rail, for train stations. And uh, this is the ball washing race, how you can see the, the data. Okay, next one. I think I'm in the, at the end. Mm, this is how you can manage the, um, this is, probably the next steps, because obviously the project will not finish in, 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 in and, we'll, and we will put everything in the, in the trash bin. So we will continue doing analytics on top. We will, do, we will still have some plans for doing uh, reasoning and analytics. And the idea is to enable those services that are, has been created already on top and make more uh, interaction between them. Pretty much what Vital will do, Vital will do but at the service level. Vital will do it at the sensor level or the application level, but we will do it at the service level, probably the next proposal that we will submit it in, in the next call. Okay, the, the other example of uh, next steps is the applications of uh, healthcare applications. The idea in here is um, uh, to have, uh, in this scenario is uh, cardiovascular monitoring. Uh, you will have access to the databases on the world that you have uh, about the, perform the, the electrocardiograms and then you can analyze your results with those, map, with those uh, uh, applications. And then the, the differences or the tendencies, you can see a tendency, and if it's a bad tendency, you can even suggest, go to the doctor because maybe you can be propensed to have a heart attack. But if you see a variation on the, on, that is not expected, then it's having a problem at the moment. So you, you might even detect or predict something. And obviously everything is based on cloud infrastructures, and the diagnosis is part of the reasoning part that we are working in the, in the group. Okay, if you see something interesting uh, that you want to work as a student or as a researcher, just contact us. And this is pretty much um, my presentation. Thank you. <laughs>